the aim of this video now is to show all the effects and consequences of a price ceiling on this graph of demand and supply that we usually use to represent the market of individual products. And uh, what we want to do is, we first of all, and most importantly, we want to show on this graph that when you put a price ceiling, first of all, we want to show how do we do that on this graph, how do we represent that, and then we also want to show the amount of shortage that is created. Now here, in this market of petrol, we are initially assuming that the equilibrium price is 150 and the equilibrium quantity is 100. So 100 liters of petrol are, is the quantity demanded, that is also the quantity supplied. So as usual in this free market, there is no shortage, there is no surplus, everything is in equilibrium. Now if the government feels that this price is too steep, uh, this petrol is too expensive for the consumers and they want to help these consumers, that is where they will come in and let's assume they place a price ceiling of 75 rupees. Now this price ceiling is an upper price limit on petrol that the government has imposed. So basically the government is saying that nobody can charge a price of more than 75. And since initially, uh, and to begin with in the free market, the price was 150. So it is above the maximum price ceiling, the limit set by the government. So this price will not exist anymore. So what will then happen? Well, basically what will happen is and that this maximum limit of 75 is the price that will operate in, in the market because uh, you see the producers, they are, although they are allowed to charge a price below 75, this is the price ceiling and upper price limit. You can still charge a price below that, but the producers will have no incentive to do it. So basically this is the new price that will exist in the market now. And at this new lower price of 75, you see this, the new quantity supplied is the horizontal distance from this price up till the supply curve, or we can mark it down over here. Let's call that QS, the quantity supplied after the price ceiling. Now we can clearly see that this quantity supplied is less than the 100 units that were being supplied in the free market equilibrium. So let's assume this is a quantity supplied of 70. Now already we can see on this graph what we had learned intuitively that as soon as the price falls, some producers will leave the market, quantity supplied will fall. And on the other hand, we said that as the product becomes cheaper, the more consumers, they will be interested in buying this product, so the quantity demanded will increase. On this graph, the new quantity demanded at this new price of 75 will be the horizontal distance from this price up until in the demand curve, or we can mark it out over here. Let's call that QD, the new quantity that the consumer want to buy. Now this QD is clearly more than the equilibrium quantity. So let's say it is 120 units. So this is where intuitively we said more consumers will rush in to the market. 120 people now want to buy this product instead of 100. And this difference between the 120 units that the consumers want to buy and 70 units that are being supplied, this difference of 50 or this part over here is the shortage that is created as you put a price ceiling on any product. And that is the simple, very simple, straightforward way in which you can show that a price ceiling will create a shortage. Now again, you can you know revisit the price mechanism and the functions of prices because remember we have previously learned that in a free market when prices are, are allowed to move freely and the whole price mechanism sort of works automatically because as soon as the shortage develop in a free market the price will start to increase but here by putting the price ceiling at 75 the government is basically shut down the price mechanism. It is not allowing the price to increase or rise above 75. And that is why the shortage will now continue to exist. The price has been disallowed to perform its rationing function. 
So you see the government interference to help the poor people and make this product more affordable, immediately that creates the problem of shortage and that then leads to long queues. But that long queue is again not an alternative to the way in which the price sort of rations out the excess consumers. These queues, they are not able to get rid of this imbalance between the demand and supply. They are not able, these queues are not able to get rid of these shortages. And therefore, a black market will develop. And in this black market, you see, at this new price, the total quantity supplied is just 70 units. So 70 over here. This means that initially, whereas 100 units were being produced and consumed, now only 70 units are being produced. So few units than before are being produced which means that the 70 will be the new quantity that is traded in the market. That is, although consumers, they wish to buy 120 units, they will only be able to buy 70 units because that is the quantity that is being supplied now. And this is where we are saying that with so many consumers going after these little bit of 70 units, and then the powerful, the rich and the people with connections, they will use their influence, they will use their ability to illegally offer these producers a much larger price than 75 so that they, they can sort of, you know, get the products reserved, particularly for them and for their friends and so on and so forth. So that is where we said that in these black markets where the quantity supplied will be less than before, this fewer number of units that are still available in the market, they will end up most likely with the powerful, the rich and the influential people. So the aim of price ceiling, which was to help the poor people, you will end up with totally sort of kicking out the poor people entirely from the market. They will end up without getting any of this product at all. Now, the only good thing that we can say about a price ceiling, which I didn't mention in the last video, is that you see these 70, at this price of 75, these 70 units that are still produced and therefore still bought in the market, some of those lucky people, whether they are rich people or influential or whatnot, but whoever is the lucky person to be somehow able to get one of these 70 units and that is still available in the market, those 70 consumers, they will benefit. And they will benefit by being able to get this product at a lower price of 75 instead of 150. They would have had to pay in a free market. So remember, we should add here because questions usually ask you, will discuss whether price ceilings will always hurt the consumers. So the answer, as we have been saying so far, is that yes, usually they always almost hurt the consumers by creating shortages, skews, black markets, and we can show that on the graph. But then towards the end, as a very minor point, just remember that you mentioned that some consumers do benefit. And these are the consumers who are lucky enough to get one of these few units of this product that will still be available in the market. So that pretty much sums up all you need to know about price ceilings. Uh, but before we leave this video, I want to uh, talk about one other minor detail uh, that is actually pretty useless, um, but it is important to know because it is very frequently asked, but fortunately in a very repetitive way. And what I'm talking about relates uh, to the idea of a non-binding price ceiling. So what is a non-binding price ceiling? Now, non-binding price ceiling is a sort of a stupid idea because it assumes that uh, given a starting price of 150, if the government comes in and puts a price ceiling, uh, a maximum upper price limit of 175 rupees, then this is a stupid idea because you see the government is saying that, look, nobody is allowed to charge a price of more than 175. Whereas currently in the market, the producers, they are only charging the price of 150 and they are already much below the maximum price limit that the government is setting. 
So it is in that sense we say that this will be a non-binding price ceiling whenever a price ceiling is set at a price which is more than the initial free market price then this sort of a price ceiling will have no effect a non-binding price ceiling it will have no effect on the market at all nobody is affected by this government announcement you can't charge more than 175 fine we are already charging less than 175 and that means that uh, the whole chaos that we had been talking about uh, with, we had been saying results as a as a consequence of a price ceiling that relates or that happens only when we are considering a case of a binding price ceiling, a price ceiling that binds the producer in a certain way. And the, the, the price ceiling will be effective or binding if it is set below uh, the current equilibrium price in the market. So if the price ceiling is set below the current free market price, that is where these producers who were charging 150, they are now told that you can't charge 150. You can't even charge anything more than 75. So these producers are in a way you can say caught by this new government ordinance of price ceiling. So a binding price ceiling is what leads to all of these bad consequences. So you don't need to worry too much about non-binding. But just remember, if the examiner, he just draws a, a line reflecting the price ceiling at a, at a price that is more than the current equilibrium in the market, then this will be a non-binding price ceiling. It will have no effect on the market at all.